Here we have 10.6 solving quadratic inequality and it says graph the solution to the following inequality on the number line. So here um, we actually need to um, talk about this one. So here we'll notice that we don't have it equal to zero and it's not factored like the concept before. So the first thing we need to do is get this quadratic all over to one side. Then you can factor it. And then to find those um, important numbers, you set each factor equal to zero. So you get x equal to six and x equal to four. And then um, you create your number line. So as far as these two numbers come, four goes first and then the six. And so then we'll pick our test values. So three and five and seven. And so you can plug them into the factored version. Okay. So if I plug in three, three minus six is a negative. And then three minus four is a negative. So when I multiply a negative and a negative, I will get a positive. But a positive value is not less than zero. So this section will not be included in the solution. When I plug in five, five minus six is a negative and five minus four is a positive. So when I multiply those, I get a negative and negatives are less than zero. So this section does work. Then for the seven, seven minus six is positive one, seven minus four is positive three. So when I multiply the two positives, I get a positive positives are not less than zero. So this section does not work. So it is an any circles here. And since only the middle section worked, I will shade in the middle section and that will be the graph of the solution. Now, if they ask me for the solution as um, an interval, which they will eventually, and we might as well get used to it now, um, then it would be from four to six, and then because they're both open dots, it would be parentheses. So this is the interval, and then this is the graph, and the computer wants the graph. So you really only need to do this. I just want you to get into practice of doing the intervals, because eventually that's what they're going to ask you for. So now for this problem, I would have to add three to both sides. So I get, actually no, I have a negative x squared. I would much rather move the negative x squared over so it becomes positive. So then I'm going to have um, a positive x squared and a negative two x. Positive x squared, negative two x. So I get zero, none of these are like terms, so I'm gonna put the positive x squared in the front negative 2x next and then the negative 3 last. So then I'm going to have um, x minus 3 and x plus 1 and so then I'm going to have x minus 3 equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0, so x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. On a number line, negative 1 is on the left, 3 is on the right, pick some test values like negative two. Between a negative and a positive, I always pick zero. And then another value over here. And so, now remember, the little alligator mouth opens to the bigger number, right? So you wanna see if this is bigger than zero. <clears throat> so if I plug in negative two, that's gonna be a negative value, and negative two plus one is also a negative value, so I get positive. Is a positive bigger than zero? It is. Here, I'm gonna plug in zero, so I get zero minus three, which is a negative. Zero plus one, which
one does not have a bar underneath. Again, it's a strict inequality. So I'm going to use open circles. And then this section works, so I will shade in that way. And this section works, so I will shade in that way. That's all that the computer wants as far as the answer is concerned. But if in later sections it asks me for the interval, there's two pieces of interval. It's negative infinity to negative one, and then for three to positive infinity. And because they're open circles and infinities, you have to use the parentheses. And always go with the left part of the shaded piece and then the right part of the shaded piece. Left part of the shaded piece, right part of the shaded piece. It has to go in that order. If you do it backwards, it'll say it's wrong as far as intervals are concerned. Okay, last one. So we do have a positive x squared here. So I'm actually gonna add two x to both sides. So then I get x squared plus two x less than or equal to zero. And then if I factor this, it's x times x plus two. So x equals zero, x plus two equals zero. So x equals negative two. And on the number line, um, negative two is on the left, zero is on the right. So if I plug in a negative three, a negative one, and a positive one, let's see what we get. So negative and a negative will be a positive. Um, negative and a positive will be negative. Positive and positive will be positive. And then you want the values that are less than zero. So it would only be this section in the middle and not these two sections. It does have an equal bar, so it would be a solid dot and then only the section in between is going to be shaded. So again, in the computer, this is all they want is the graph. But in later, in later topics, just to start getting the hang of it, they're gonna ask you for the interval. And if they do, it's a solid, which means bracket, negative two, and on the right, solid, so a bracket, and zero. And this is the interval you use for that solution.